Alrighty, man, spreading the floor, episode 49. I am your gracious host, Jacob Cooperman. Welcome back to the show to my left. Nigel Petty Fernandez. We got two trades, two buyouts, two teams, two mega stars in the NBA making waves, capping off this trade deadline. Well, it wasn't even capping off because it just happened after. The two buyouts happened after the trade deadline occurred. We've got Andre Drummond and LaMarcus Aldridge going to the Nets and the Lakers, respectively. All good. Yeah, we're good. Um, yeah, no, it was it was definitely one of the highlights of the trade deadline because, you know, two big name centers kind of going off to the two bigger teams in the NBA to the respective places. Um, definitely kind of finalizing what, you know, playoff predictions and everything, trying to trying to make both teams as strong as possible. Because I feel like the narrative in the NBA right now is that the Lakers are going to be meeting up with the Nets in the finals. Yes. So it's just, it's, it, I think it's kind of funny that, that both of them just decided that's okay, we got to team up with, you know, the two. Right. We got to pick a side, you know what I'm saying? If I had it my way, I would have I would have switched. I would have switched. You the switched them? Yes. I don't know if I agree with you on that. So here's one, what he, I know. I knew you wouldn't agree with Go me, ahead. but here, here's the thing. I'm going to explain myself, Go right? Ahead. You have a guy in Andre Drummond. Yeah. That is a much better defender than Marcus Aldridge. Yes. Right? A much better rebounder. Can average 17 points per game. He was averaging 17 points per Or excuse me, 15 points per game coming into the season. He's been very consistent over the last, let's just say, five to six seasons. Uh, you got a guy in Aldridge that's getting older. He's 35. We've seen his kind of steep decline this year. He's only averaging around, if I'm correct here, he went from 22 points per game to around like 14. Yeah. Something in that neighborhood. So we see a guy that has this this steep decline. Now, obviously, I understand that LaMarcus Aldridge is a great low post ISO player. Like yes. One of the best. If you get that man down in the low post and he hits a fadeaway or he goes to his, his signature move, which is the fadeaway, that's that spells doom and gloom for the defense. Right? I get that. Yes. And I get that it's on brand with the Nets kind of organization, the way they handle things. They love ISO players. They love guys that can score from anywhere. So... On, surf, on the surface, it makes sense. And on the surface, everyone's saying, you know, LaMarcus Aldridge is another big name. How are they doing this? You know, I, I didn't know this was the all-star team. By the way, they still have another spot. They still yeah, have I know. another they roster still, yeah, spot, which yeah, is yeah, I know insane. That. It's ridiculous. Uh, but I, I'm not necessarily buying into that, man. I think if you replace LaMarcus Aldridge, what is it going to do for the Nets except add more scoring? We we know there are teams that could be elite on the defensive and off offensive side of the ball. And I'm, I've been very complimentary. The Nets have started to figure out that there's a way that you can realistically kind of have all these scores on one team and and they've kind of figured out a way to work in plays and not just have the the offense be run by whatever Kyrie or Kevin Durant feels like they're doing at any given time. And I, I think they draw up more plays and that's worked, right? right? We've seen a much more cohesive net squad. I just think now you have to worry about, and this is the, the dangerous part of Andre Drummond going to the Lakers is he's strengthened that team significantly on the defensive side of the yes, ball. Yes, absolutely. So now when Anthony Davis and LeBron get back, yeah, you know, that's going to be a scary team. Now, I think the Nets come playoff time, their chief worry should be defense. They're still 26th ranking in, in defense in the league. They're first in offense. Obviously, their offense is dirty, and it's yeah. gotten even better. It's progressed over the course of the season. But if I'm the Nets, I'm looking to bolster my defensive side of the ball. And I know that Drummond, he's he's known as this guy that pretty much defends and, and primarily grabs rebounds. But right. I, th I think for sure that man can score the ball as well. Yeah, absolutely. He's very athletic. So, you know, I would have just switched. Honestly, I, I would have switched the scene, switched the trades. And, and you get a guy in the Marcus Aldridge that helps with the, the depth that the, the larger positions on the Lakers with Marcus all there. He's kind of washed. You obviously don't have LeBron and, and Anthony Davis. They're usually the go to length on that team. Yeah. To me, it just makes sense. You got to switch him, though. I don't understand also this 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 weird narrative that somehow the Nets have now created this super team, like it wasn't a super team before. No, it was, but they keep just they keep just adding fuel to the fire. They, it's a kind of at this point, it's almost insult to injury. I mean, the Nets the Nets are just absolutely ridiculous. They already were, and then yeah. they just keep picking up these guys. Now I know the whole narrative about Blake Griffin's wash. So how are you going to say that now they're a super team because Blake Griffin's on it? It's just, it's just the fact you got all these like good players, big name yeah. guys, you know, guys who, who who want big contracts. How how do you fit them all in one team? You know what I'm saying? How, it's, it's how are insane. they doing that? Um, I understand what you're saying about the switch. You know, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Uh, what I think it came down to the fact is that Lamarcus Aldridge is in the twilight of his career. Yeah, it's coming to an end. Obviously, within the next four or five years. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Andre Drummond is still in his prime. If not, he's 
you know, getting over that hump, you know, the, right. the end of his prime. I think that Andre Drummond is worth more. I think he's going to do more than LaMarcus Aldridge. And I think he knows that right now the, the, the Lakers would be the underdogs in that final situation. I think that the Lakers, to- like, like, hey, we got, there's these two guys, uh, you know, they're both going to be free agents. They're both going to get bought out. Who do we want out of them? Well, we got we to gotta convince Drummond that, you know, he's the better guy. He's our guy. We want him on the team. We need some, you know, when Anthony Davis comes back, we want someone powerful to come off the bench because we know the Nets aren't going to have anyone coming off the bench. I think that this is going to give the Lakers kind of the, a little bit of oomph that they needed. Yeah. You know what I'm that saying? That we can agree on. For sure. Right. Absolutely. So while I, I understand that, that maybe it would have fit better the other way, I think the Lakers knew they were like, no, we, we need, we need Drummond. We can't, we can't take our chances with LaMarcus Aldridge. We don't know how he's going to perform. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Guy's been on the Spurs his whole life. Then we take him over to LA. Well, that's another thing. It's like, to me, they see the Lakers, the, they see the Nets, excuse me, doing that. And the Lakers go, oh, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, listen, you, you get Aldrich, right? You, you get a 35 year old. He's great ISO score, but we'll take the guy that's in my personal opinion, just a lot more well-rounded, a lot more consistent. Well, he's and just we'll, younger. We'll, he's we'll just t- younger. And, and younger. Yeah. And we'll take him over to LA. And yeah, you guys, you guys sign him to me personally. This might be a hot take. This doesn't change the Nets team that much. This um, doesn't. It, it it definitely adds a little bit. It adds a little bit of scoring. It adds That's a tiny bit, and I agree with you. I think that this trade impacted the late the Lakers more than it did the Nets. Um, however, do, is that chalked up to the fact that Andre Drummond is just that much better than Lamarcus Aldridge, or is that chalked up to the fact that the Nets were already better than the Lakers? And by adding this, it doesn't really give them much. You know what I'm saying? I I'm trying to understand. So you're essentially saying that. The Nets kind of already knew that they were in that situation the, where they didn't need to bolster that much, so they they just went for Lamarcus Aldridge. Yeah, they were like they were like, if we can't get Jim, we can't get this guy. We're just the more sign, affordable sign. center. Yeah. That could be it too. You know what I I'm just saying? I just still think that schematically, right? Like I I, I think you know the, the, the Andre would have been a much better fit. But I I, I see what you're saying. It no. could have been a much more affordable option for the Nets. But I think the Lakers just they made the much better move here. Absolutely, and I, and I and I agree with you. I think I think definitely that the the roles would have fit better puzzle piece wise right. if they were swapped. Um, but I think that this, this was a good move by the Lakers. Hopefully LeBron and AD will come back in yeah. time for the playoffs and that we can actually see this in action because if it's not the Lakers, and this is actually something else I want to ask you. Mm. If not the Lakers to beat the Nets, who? I see Utah getting up there. The Nets, you know, with, with signing a guy like, LaMarcus Aldridge, that's going to give someone problems on the in- in- interior with his size and yeah, the way he, you know, course, he, yeah. when he goes to his, his signature fadeaway, I mean, his release point is insane. Yeah. Some centers have no, trouble blocking it, that. It, it's unguardable. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm looking for teams that can, that can keep up with the Nets high powered offense, but can also make them, you know, they, they can punish them on the defensive end. You know what I'm saying? We need a yeah. team that can stifle the Nets offense and get their own going. I see teams like Utah. I really do think so. If the Lakers get healthy, I see the Lakers. Do, obviously, it would be a, a finals matchup. Yeah, I, I see the Lakers giving them problems. Who else in the East? I have my questions about uh, the Bucks because we know how inconsistent they can be during the playoffs. But if they get their act together defensively, they're solid too. Yeah, right. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Outside of that, I mean, I, it'd, it'd be a stretch. I'd have to think. You know, I'm, I'm going through the Rolodex here. Maybe the Clippers. I was going to say, the, well, there's, there's, there's two schools of thought when thinking about it. How do you take down a team like the Nets? We know that they're not very good on defense. We know that their bench is very weak. Right. Uh, but we know that they're just going to try to outrun you every time. They're just going to try to outscore you. They're going to try to get up to 130 points, 140 points every single game. That's just how they play. Of course. Right? So now the idea is, do you try to defend them? Do you try to stop them? Do, do, you, do you think that your team is good enough to cut them off? Or do you just try to outscore them? You know what I'm saying? Because do both. Well, obviously that's how you win a game in basketball. Yeah. Defense but, win championships. But but well, absolutely. But you know, can, can Giannis really outscore three of those guys? You know what I'm saying? With, with, with the defense working as hard as it can on on Giannis's team on the on the Bucks, do they get that? You know what I'm saying? Well, do they, they win have, that match? Obviously, I mean, Giannis is the go-to guy, but I think they have competent scores outside of him. I mean, Dante. Di no, of, of course. But Giannis I see what would you have mean. One. That's always kind of been the, the issue with Giannis, right? Is that yeah. like, how is he going to get it going? How can he truly be the go-to guy on any given Bucks team? Yeah. Like, how can he really maximize his potential? And they've had problems with that. That's why I don't necessarily want to give it to the Bucks. But I think out of the teams in the East right now, 
you got the Bucks, the Sixers. Knicks. The Knicks have been overachieving, but the, yeah, the Sixers. But they're an above. They're just a, no, right the, above five hundred. I don't think the they Knicks give them aren't problems. gonna. Are no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going through the guys that are yeah. in, up at the top of the East. Yeah. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, it's uh, it's there's there's spare competition for the Nets. I think. Hot take. I think besides the Lakers, the team with the best chance of taking them down is a the Clippers, b the Nuggets. In my opinion, Nuggets added scoring. You know, I, I like I like the yeah. Nuggets team. I think they work very well together. I think that they will, you know, if you if you because the the Nuts are very isolated isolated offense. Mm. I think the Nuggets are exact opposite. Yeah, and I think that that would work in their favor. That I also think the be. Clippers defense. Clippers have good offense as well, and as well. and the bench. Yeah, they have. They would they well. would absolutely tear that team apart. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, that is the end of the episode for today. Thank, Thank you for watching minutes. episode forty nine. Episode fifty is next episode. Yep. It will not be coming out on Saturday. It will be coming out next Tuesday. We're going to record it next Monday. So stick around for that. We got something special coming up. Yep. And uh, see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Peace.